All right, so last night was Survivor Series, and uh, it was it was quite a show. I've I have noticed here the last couple of pay per views that uh, tri Triple H is definitely taking a uh, less is more approach. Like you know, it's a it's a damn near four hour show, and uh, you know, or it's at least over a three hour show, and you know five matches so uh, a couple of two two of the matches which did definitely take more than an hour to get through so he's definitely he's doing less matches and he's giving the people who have the matches plenty of time like there were no you know really short matches i'm not complaining it's just an observation uh they opened up the show with the women's war games match and uh so the way WWE has done war games with those, uh, those you know, those shark tanks and new people add as time goes on. That's not the way I remember WCW doing it back in the day. However, it does create an interesting dynamic and I don't hate it. Um, so uh, that being said, we did see uh, Alexa Bliss and Asuka, Bianca and Mia Yim. Uh, along with Becky Lynch, come out victorious. There was a, um, a, a, this match, you know, this was the opener. And I will say the women, the women set the bar um, for the men's game, men's war games match to uh, try and meet. Um, now, it set the bar for uh, ath athleticism and, and, stunts uh rather high um oh you know spoiler alert they set it high enough to where i don't really think the men's match met it on that front it superseded it and surpassed it on uh on other fronts namely psychology and storytelling however um this was uh the women's war games match was probably the as far as physicality goes the most entertaining match on the card um so after that we go into uh aj styles versus finn balor which you know i like i like aj styles quite a bit and i got nothing against finn balor uh but for whatever reason i just did not i was not was not feeling this match the way you would think that I would. Um, I'm not. I'm not ignorant. I'm not ignorant to their their background. I'm I'm aware of you know their stories and how their paths have crossed and all that jazz. I just don't. I I just kind of didn't care. Um, you know, but my, and that's you know my personal thing. But um, AJ did come up victorious there and. Um, I don't know it just it was it wasn't a match where I felt like I had to keep my eyes on it the whole time otherwise I'd miss something it was uh it was good it was it but it was just good you know um after that I believe it was after that we got a uh, a little backstage segment Jay Uso going to uh tell Roman what happened with Sammy and Kevin on uh, on the night before on SmackDown, <clears throat> and uh, you know it was you know they could just they just got Paul Heyman sitting in the back and they're just sitting there back there quietly holding the belt. Just so <clears throat> uh, that being said, um, I, I it would appear that Jay has kind of had it out for Sammy straight along. And, but, you know, Roman listens to Jay and says, you know, basically tells him, like, I'll look into it. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Very Godfather-esque, you know, which is probably what they're going for at that point. Uh, we then went into the SmackDown Women's Championship match. God, my hair's a mess. I uh, went into SmackDown Women's Championship match, which was uh, Ronda Rousey versus Shotzi. I guess, I guess they just call her Shotzi now. Um... I, I, I'd have to double check, but I, I'm pretty sure this was the shortest match on the card. Um, 
and apparently Shotzi's very, very popular with people. Uh, I, I don't really care. The highlight of this is the fact that they're actually having Ronda behave like a heel. I've been saying since day one that Ronda Rousey should be a heel. Um, you know, my, Ronda Rousey should, should always be a heel, just like Brock, Brock Lesnar should always be a heel. Um, now I'm not talking about be a chicken shit heel, be a badass heel, be, 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 be the heel that is the heel because nobody can beat you and everybody hates you for it. That's the heel that Ronda should be, just like that's the heel that Brock should be. They they should be in a position where they never actually become a baby face. You just have the pockets of people that love them because they're so badass. Um, so yeah, Ronda, of course, pulled out the win here, um, as she should. Um, you know, so they they got her they got her going around with Shayna Baszler hanging out with her, which it's good. Use real life; those two are actually friends. They actually train together in MMA. MMA. You use real life as much as possible. Um, so yeah, I was, I was happy with that. Ronda needs a better caliber opponent, uh, but that's that's kind of hard to do right now because I mean. You think about it, who who are they going to have? You know, um people like people like uh Becky and were were busy in other matches. Uh I'm not even sure where Charlotte is. She wasn't on this show, so I don't I don't know what's going on with Charlotte. Um or Sasha Banks for that matter. So um it's just right right now there does not feel like at least to me that there is any type of credible threat in the women's division uh, to Ronda. So they, they're going to have to do some work in order to make somebody um, seem credible is what they're going going to have to do. So. Uh, after the SmackDown Women's Championship match, we saw Roman bring Sammy in and talk to Sammy. Now, I I actually... Now, bear in mind, bear in mind that personally, I can't stand Sammy Zayn. And I have, I've never really been a big fan of Roman Reigns. I don't like these people. However, they're doing a good job. Um, Roman, th th this story's well written. I'd love to know who's writing it, um, because they deserve some credit. So Roman brings in Sammy, and the whole thing here was Sammy apparently had a conversation with Kevin Owens on SmackDown and then lied to uh, Jay Uso about it when he was asked. However, when when Roman asked Sammy about it, Sammy told him the truth. <sighs> As I was saying, um, the the story they're telling with Sammy Zayn and the Bloodline, it's very good. You know, Roman asking Sammy point blank whether or not he had been talking to Kevin Owens or whether or not he talked to Kevin Owens the day before. And, uh, you know, Sammy to, you know, again, all speaking in characters, ignore the fact that they're real people for, for a moment. Um, you know, Sammy's character, he told the truth. He, um, you know, he, his, his delivery, his performance was believable very sincere and you know they're really setting the uh setting the stage if you will for the um drama that would proceed in the match itself when it when it would start um because that, that is where the men's match definitely surpassed the women's match was in uh cohesive storytelling and, uh, you know, like there's just so much more meat on the bone to tell a story for those characters 
than there were for the women's characters. It just, you know, just by the nature, the breadth, the width, and the depth of the story that has been told up to this point, they just had more to work with. Um, but after that, they got the triple threat match for the United States Championship between Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley, and Austin Theory. This match, um, it's funny, it's, it's the only match where I didn't accurately guess the winner. <clears throat> so, um, I really did think that Bobby Lashley was going to get the United States Championship back. He did not. Uh, Austin Theory became the United States Champion. And I'll be honest, I'm I'm not mad at it. The crowd in Boston was, the crowd in Boston was actually quite mad at it. Uh, there there were there were quite audible boos. However, uh, I ain't mad at it. I uh, I don't mind this at all. I think theory uh, moving into a program with Rollins um, is good. I think those two will you know definitely put on. Uh, good matches. I'd like to see Lashley. Uh, normally, this is the part where I say I'd like to see Lashley move up and compete for a world championship. However, with what they're doing with the Bloodline, I don't know. They they may want to keep Lashley away from Roman because um, I am I'm very very much um, we're just still stuck in this rut, and maybe I'm wrong, but I. I really do think they're gonna they're gonna be building for rock and roman to wrestlemania uh, the royal rumble in texas uh, in january i am i fully expect to see some type of shenanigans that you know set up for that but uh so you know that being said and i don't know how many more times they want to do lashley versus lesnar um you know, I'm just not sure. I don't know how many more times they want to do it. Um, this last time they did Lashley versus Lesnar at Crown Jewel, uh, Lesnar was dominant and only lost the match because, you know, of of Lesnar having, quote-unquote, more experience and a better, you know, better, you know, better thinking on the fly ability. Uh, adaptability is what I was looking for. So, um, you know, I, I could definitely see them doing um, doing another match between the two. As much as I uh, enjoyed War Games, I, um, in, in the future, I'd much rather see a return at Survivor Series to the five-on-five -five, uh, elimination-style tag match. Uh, instead of war games, I think war games uh, could benefit from getting its own uh, pay per view, similar to Elimination Chamber and Hell in a Cell did. Uh, but you know, who knows what they'll do moving forward. But uh, so yeah, Austin Theory, your new United States champion. Uh, so. <clears throat> And the final match of the night was the Bloodline versus Kevin Owens, Drew McIntyre, and the Brawling Brutes. So, uh, that match was just the storytelling throughout it was so good. Uh, so they had they had uh, Pete Dunne, excuse me, they had Butch start the match and bloodline had jay uso start the match so jay uso is in there by himself against butch that's not too bad and then comes rich holland jay's in a two-on-one scenario he really starts getting you know the business and when it's time for the bloodline to send somebody else, Jimmy, he's ready to go, man. Like he goes, he go, he makes it out the cage. Roman reaches out, and grabs his shirt. Roman's like, "No, nah, no, nah, you stay here. You go. Send Sammy." And of course, Sammy and Jay. Jay's had a big problem with Sammy, and you know, so Sammy, he's t he's tentative, but he but he goes, 
and uh, he saves Jay's ass a couple of times. And, you know, him and Jay are forced to work together a little bit, which, you know, doesn't always work, you know, because Jay's a little hot-headed. Um, but just the, the whole, the whole story of, it's funny, the whole story of the match seemed to happen within the bloodline, with the exception of Kevin Owens on the other side of the, uh, on the other, other side of the match. And, um, you know, the whole thing ends with Sammy proving without a shadow of the doubt, uh, his loyalty by, you know, turning, uh, he s stops KO from being able to get the pin on Roman. Uh, he low blows KO. He halluva kicks KO. And he serves KO up to Jey Uso for the Uso splash and the pin. And uh, afterwards, you know, Roman embraces him and Jay embraces him. And so now there's no more questioning the loyalty of Sami Zayn. I must say, for a uh, wrestling show, the performances were wonderful. It was very, very believable. And... Um, you know, uh, speaking from, you know, my own experience being part of a, uh, being part of a family and a, uh, community where loyalty is, it's a, it's a big deal. And we're, it haven't always been the, uh, most upstanding of citizens. You know, sometimes you get dirty to get things done. Um, all of that being, being said, loyalty is a huge, huge deal. And they made it one um, in this story. And it, it was quite good. I, uh, I, was, I was so pleasantly surprised by this. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I give, I, I definitely, I definitely give this show, definitely a, give this show a very solid uh, four out of five. They don't get much better than this, um, you know. The the really only, um, the really, really the only thing I can say is I do hope that we see a return next year of the five on five uh, elimination tag matches, and maybe we give War Games its own show, but. That would be it. Mm -hmm.